do we got the, the the trade deadline here in about a day and a half. Let's get into some twin statements from the weekend. And if I could, I'd love to start us off. Actually, I'm going to call an audible here. Ordinarily, we sure. do the buffoon of the week toward the end of the show. Mm-hmm. I actually think we should start with buffoon of the week here. And I'll give I'll give you guys one. The buffoon of the week is all three of us collectively. We are the buffoons of the week. Okay. For thinking that the Minnesota Twins would actually consider seriously trading for one of the two top starting pitchers on the market. Oh, I like it. I like where you're going. Luis Castillo and Frankie Montas. Yep. So Luis Castillo on Friday, I believe it was, was traded to the Seattle Mariners for an absolute haul of prospects. It was like four prospects or whatever the price was that they paid. Mm-hmm. And uh, and the Mariners are doing it with almost the exact same record as the Minnesota Twins. Now, the Mariners are coming off of before the All-Star break. They won 14 consecutive games. They've sputtered a little bit since then, but they're coming on this crescendo. The Twins are actually playing six games below 500 since May 24th. So the Mariners thought, hey, let's double down on this team that was red hot before the All-Star break. But mm-hmm. but mainly what they're doing is saying, we are sick and tired of not making the playoffs for 20 years. We don't care about these prospects. Take them off of our hands. We want the number one starting pitcher on the trade market, and we will pay whatever price it takes and then some, because damn it, we are sick of this. And they're probably going to make the playoffs now. Probably not going to catch the Astros, but they're going to be a wild card team, and yep. they'll play a three game series, and they will get to start Luis Castillo in Game One of that series. Minnesota Twins have at least been to the playoffs several times since 2001, but they haven't won a playoff game since 2004. And I'm wondering, and there's still other options out there, but the two biggest options we've been talking about for months, and the league has been talking about, are Montas and Castillo. And there's a report out from John Heyman that says. Uh, actually, it was from uh, John Morosi from Fox that said there's like two or three teams that are sort of finalists for Montas, who's battled some arm in- injury issues this year, so it might be a little bit of a red flag. But the mm-hmm. Twins were not listed among those suitors. There's other pitchers out there. They could definitely make a trade. I think they probably will trade for pitching. But we are the buffoons for wow. thinking that they would go after with a Hall of Top Prospects, a Luis Castillo type, to help their team this season. It's very fair. Yes. Yes, we need to eat crow. Because why did we have faith? Why did we have faith? And I, I do think we talked about this last week. I mean, they if they get a starter, it's going to be a guy like Quintana, right? Like, it's going to be a guy like that. And, my God, too, this division is so bad. I've never seen a division that nobody wanted like this one. It's like every time the Twins are like, oh, we're dropping two or three to the Padres. The Guardians are like, but we're only going to win one. And the White Sox are like, oh, we'll screw this Tony. up. Have you, uh, yeah, Tony, have you guys ever, I mean, I cannot remember the last time that a division involving a Minnesota sports team felt like this big of hot potato. It's pretty bad. This, Although this division, there were some years in the early 2000s where this happened, too, where the Twins were kind of toiling. Was it like 2009? Yeah, Weren't they, they below yeah. 500 at some point around the All-Star break? And then they wound yeah, up doing they, kind I, of a half trade for Orlando Cabrera, who got red hot in like September. Oh, uh, wait, when they lost the first 163, I think that was like an 85-85 win White Sox-Twins team. Okay. So like, But that, that division wasn't great either. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 a bad, it's a bad division. Yeah. So again, they they probably will trade for pitching, but I just I think it just shows a couple of things. They they didn't have the ammunition to match what the Mariners threw out there for Castillo. Absolutely. And that shouldn't be overlooked in the evaluation of Falvey and Levine. Well, what do you want them to do? They didn't have the prospects. Well, why don't they have the prospects? They haven't been right. trading any. <laughs> they right. traded a couple here and there, but for Sonny Gray, but it's not like they it's not like they've dealt off six of their top prospects and that's why they're depleted. They're depleted because some of it's injury, but some of it's also like guys aren't producing at the level that you thought they would. Why is Austin Martin so crappy? Why is right. Jordan Belazovich one of the worst pitchers in the minor leagues, right? So it'd be nice to have those guys as actual trade chips here in the next 48 hours, but they probably aren't. Anyhow, there's right. your buffoon of the week. It's us. It's well deserved. It's well okay. deserved. All right. My twin statement is cause for concern. Why? 
It doesn't even have to do with the team itself of a, like a trade. It has to do with one player. Alex Kirilov has been shelved again by this wrist problem that won't go away. A year ago, he had surgery. It was supposed to fix it. It still hurt. He came back. Uh, missed time again. And now is out again. And Alex Kirilov, make no mistake, I think is a very talented young hitter who has huge upside and has shown that. But a wrist is about the worst possible thing that could be a problem, and it's appearing more and more by the day that this is not solvable. Like, they're trying things. They did surgery. Um, This is a definite cause for concern because if he was going to be a trade chip by uh, tomorrow's deadline, that's done now. And more importantly, if you were banking on him probably being your long-term first baseman and a guy who could definitely, you know, potentially, I don't know, down the road battle for a batting title, uh, that's becoming more and more difficult. So I think that there is a definite cause for concern when it comes to a guy that the Twins consider one of their top young hitters. Yeah, this is, and there's nothing you could have done because everyone's aware that he has wrist problems, but this is why I've just been more willing to give him up in a trade potentially, but now no one's going to trade for him at this point, at this point in the season anyways. But, you know, as we sit here and talk about Miranda or Kirilov, you know, which one would you regret losing the most? This this wrist stuff is concerning. Now, didn't David Ortiz have wrist issues early in his career, too, with the Twins? And that was part of the reason why they let him go in 2002. And then he turned out to be fine for 15 years and then became one of the greatest hitters of all time. Sure. So I'm, I'm not saying, like, Kirilov is going to be David Ortiz, but, right. you know, how bad are these wrist issues going to be? Is this going to be something that kind of limits his career or is it just like a one or a two year thing and you just got to find the right surgeon? I I don't know, man. It's concerning Again, for sure. Yeah. Not good. Yeah. All right, Dex. All right. Uh, my first twin statement, I'll go with this one. Uh, very simple. Joey Gallo is not it. That does nothing for me. <laughs> I might now, bite you on this, actually. Okay. I but, love like, me we, some Joey Gallo. We can spar here, potentially. So so uh, I believe it was John Heyman uh, <laughs> threw it out there that the Brew Crew is interested in him, and the Yankees are listening on offers for him. Um, and he just kind of, you know, typically in typical Heyman, MLB insider fashion, like the Twins are also potentially in the mix for a guy like Joey Gallo. Now, you just lost Kirloff to Judd's point to a wrist injury. Max Kepler has a broken toe. So, yeah. A little sparse in the outfield depth. I have no interest in acquiring an outfielder who has been hitting like 170 over the last 100 plus games, who gives you pop, but is basically Miguel Sano. That's a better athlete. Like he strikes out a ton, he hits a lot of bombs, but he's a he's a decent defender. That does nothing for me in terms of trying to win a playoff game or getting more butts in the seats in 2022 and beyond. Joey Gallo. If 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 the if the dust settles at five o'clock tomorrow and the only move that is made is for Joey Gallo because now you have some outfield injuries, I am going to be massively disappointed. Joey Gallo does nothing for me. Okay, so I'm going to fight you a little bit on this one because <laughs> I am a Joey Gallo stan. I will admit first and foremost, I okay. stan for Joey Gallo. Okay, he has been atrocious with the Yankees, but a lot of guys, Sonny Gray is one of them. A lot of guys get to New York, and for whatever reason, the pressure is too much, or the media coverage throws them off, or they Gary just Sanchez. don't hit well. Gary Sanchez had a couple good years, but yeah, yeah but, but it just kind of got to him. Kind of got to yeah. him. So yes. in New York, he was one of the worst hitters in all of baseball. But in Texas, for like six years, he was a better version of Miguel Sano, a healthier version of Miguel Sano, a better defensive player than Miguel Sano was. He had three, uh, take that back, four different seasons where he was worth at least three wins above replacement, including he was a four and a half win player in 2021, not because of his time with the Yankees, by the way. He got traded there uh, halfway through the 2021 season. So just for some context here, Joey Gallo has been in the league since 2015, just like Miguel Sano has. They both came in the same season. Miguel Sano was 22, Gallo was 21. So they both have the same number of MLB seasons in their uh in their belt. Gallo has been worth 15 wins above replacement. Miguel Sano has been worth eight wins above replacement. So he's been twice the player wins above replacement as Miguel Sano has been. And he can play some average defense in the outfield in a corner spot, could play some first base for you. So here's what I'm saying. If you can buy low on Joey Gallo, 
and get the Texas version that hit 41 bombs, 40 bombs, 38 bombs, gets on base, draws a bunch of walks. I'm here for it. Now, to Declan's point, if you're only adding Joey Gallo and you're not fixing your pitching, <laughs> that makes no sense. But if you add like two pitchers and Joey Gallo, I'm kind of here for it. I'm kind of here for it. Declan never expected with this statement that it would yeah. set off a set off, yeah. debate he's a, about he's a free Joey agent at the other. They would basically just give him to you because they just replaced him I with uh, with Ben Intendi, and he's got a you know two months left on his contract. So, no. Oh. Joey Gallo. No <laughs> Dude, he's one of the best power hitters we've seen in the last seven years in baseball. He's got a, almost 200 home runs since 2015. Joey Gallo Crusader well, Phil Mackey. Yeah. I'm For, good. Forget the Cousins Crusaders. <laughs> I, I Joey Gallo's got Mackey. If I could place a bet, I don't know how you'd quantify this, that Joey Gallo will have a better last two months than Martin Perez. I would, but I don't know how we would quantify that. Mm. So <laughs> I think you could quantify it. ERA win, win, and wins above home runs or something. Or something. I don't know. Yeah, wins above. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I and it's funny because my statement was going to be Joey oh Gallo related by just give and take. So here's <laughs> here's my one's like I did not mean to open up that waterfall. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I think it'll be fun. And and w- by the way, you say that it won't put butts in the seats. Listen, if Joey Gallo goes on a tear and hits about ten home runs in August, oh, people are going to show up to Target Field in droves in early September. Okay, Joey Gallo is going to give you the power satisfaction that you aren't getting from Miguel Sano if this trade goes down. <laughs> Go get your tickets right now. Phil Mackey here for twinsbaseball.com slash tickets. Yep. That's twinsbaseball.com slash tickets. Uh, Joe Gallo signed baseball. I'm going to double down on a hot take here in just a second, but first let's tell the audience about if you're, if you're and this is me, I'm always sort of bad at gift ideas. Mm-hmm. Spiral light candles might be the thing for you. That's exactly right. And if you are looking for a gift for that Vikings fan in your life, well, you've come to the right place. Available today, it is Judd's Purple Positivity Candle. That's right. If you're a fan of the purple, then we have the exact gift for, I don't know, your wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, husband. The scent, I'm going to describe it to you because it smells so good. Sitting on the porch of a cabin surrounded by pines and wildflowers with the promise of a coming storm. And that storm is the purple's defense, which is going to make life hell for quarterbacks. So make sure that you have that spiral light candle burning right by you as you watch the Vikings torment opponents. Spirallightcandles.com. Spirallightcandles.com. Check it out. Again, Judd's Purple Positivity Candle is waiting for you at spirallightcandles.com. Uh, also, a shout out to our friends at Federated Mutual Insurance Company. They've been around since the early 1900s, helping maximize the success of businesses around the state of Minnesota and beyond. Federated's corporate culture is grounded in equity, integrity, teamwork, and respect. These four cornerstones create the foundation that supports all interactions and decision-making. At Federated Mutual Insurance Company, federatedinsurance.com, it's our business to protect yours. Okay. So uh, I've been telling you guys since the beginning part of June that the mm-hmm. Twins need to pick a lane, either trade for three pitchers and make a legitimate push with Buxton fairly healthy on pace to play 125 games, and you got these uh, pretty good starting pitchers in gray, And even though uh, Joe Ryan got absolutely destroyed Oof. in a start over the weekend. Got but, left uh, good for two. Pretty good. We got Carlos Correa. So either, either double down and add pitching to a good team that could – Maybe flirt with great if they get hot down the stretch with some better pitching. Yep. Or go the other way and and trade a one-year asset in Carlos Correa to somebody that might need a shortstop or an infielder or just a glove or a bat down the stretch. And so the, the comeback that people have is, well, like, who's really going to need a shortstop at the trade deadline? And my answer is there are three current contenders, playoff contenders or World Series contenders, that have major problems at shortstop. And I think if you're not willing to pay the freight on two or three pitchers here in the next day and a half, you should call these teams and see what would they give you in terms of prospect capital for Carlos Correa. Let's start with the New York Yankees, who missed out on Correa in free agency. Mm-hmm. Kiner Falefa, he ain't in at shortstop for them. It's just not okay. really. It's, it's not. It's not happening. He's got like one home run. It's just, he's not. He's not been that good. Yep. Uh, the Phillies. With Didi Gregorius, who's just been kind of a train wreck. He has not lived up to the contract that he signed. And the Phillies are like, what, seven games above 500, mm-hmm. competing for a playoff spot in the National League. And I'll even throw this team out there. 
Wander Franco was out for like six to eight weeks with some sort of an injury. The Rays. Hmm. The Rays need help up the middle. And Wander Franco is their long-term guy. But he's, right. he was That's struggling. He's been hurt. Curry and can walk, yeah. the Rays are trying to, you know, the Rays have been splashy. Hell, look what the Rays gave you for Nelson Cruz. So mm-hmm. I'm just saying, if you're not getting what you want in these talks for pitchers, do you really want to ride that median and watch Carlos Correa go sign somewhere else and you wind up with maybe like a comp pick? Or can you get two or three actual young players of value? Call the Phillies, the Yankees, and the Rays and just have a conversation. The Yankees one's actually hilarious because, I mean, the Twins were supposed to have Connor Falefa. That was going to be their shortstop. And then he gets traded back to New York so they can take away J- Josh Donaldson's contract. And the, and the Twins still get Urshela and, and Sanchez. And that actually might be a pretty solid trade when it's all said and done. They basically paid the Yankees to take on the contract. And you got two serviceable players in Urshela uh, and Gary That's Sanchez. That's a great trade. It is. It right actually now. is. For, yeah. for that regime. The JD it's, contract. It's, it's, was... it's legitimately one of their better trades. And Albatross. But, um... It'd be just hilarious if then all of a sudden, five months after the fact, with the Carlos Correa signing now, like the lore of that is gone, then you just actually still wind back up with Isaiah Connor Falefa. Carlos Correa is indeed still in New York, and the Twins' pulse season losing streak still stays intact at 18 games in a row. It's like a great full circle, terrible Minnesota sports <laughs> moment. And actually, it's plausible. I, 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 of all those four teams, I think the Yankees actually do make the most sense. I still think them trading away Carlos Correa would be waving a white flag and also be it would be it, it would be an insane cause for ridicule and criticism and they would yeah. deserve it they but would deserve not, it but not trading for pitching is the white flag yes and so if you've if you've already waved the white flag by not trading for pitching then you might as well just wave it higher and go get something that can help you in 2023-24 you know Phil, Phil brings up an interesting point though and it's very simple Thank and you. it's this do you have so so like we can all say you know what two bullpen arms and a starter you know, get me a filet mignon and get me another steak. And another. But like Phil said, I don't know that they have the means to get that. Well, uh, like that's a, you, right now, prices are skyrocketing and they should be. But how how on earth when you look at what is available and healthy in this farm system right now, as far as prospects go, I think the real question is how much can you even trade to get the return that you expect, because I think three pitchers is out of the question, I think. And also, uh, the Yankees just paid for uh, Scott Efros from the Cubs. That literally just went down as we're recording this. So they gave up, I don't know who Hayden uh, Wisenski is from New York, if he's a top-regarded prospect for them, but another reliever off the board, who we talked about actually earlier yep. last week in Scott Efros from the Cubs. He's now also going uh, to the New York Yankees bullpen. Yep, he's been one of the better relievers in the, the National League. So... It's hard to get mad at the Twins yet because there's still time to make moves, but it's like the more you see the Mariners make a huge splash and the Yankees adding bullpen help and this over here. It's like, all right, guys, what are we, what are we doing here? Hayden so, Wesniski was, according to MLB.com, seventh-ranked prospect right-handed pitcher in the Yankee system. Okay. So, okay. yeah, the, the, the price of poker is not cheap to add pitching what? at the deadline. Where I where I remain the most pissed off about this entire thing is how you built the bullpen this suspect. That's what gets me. Like, why are you here? Like, why are we here right now? You're supposed to be pitching people, pitching people. Damn it! And you why have can't you built, be able to see that. Yeah, you can't, <laughs> I'm a pitching person. But <laughs> how how are we here? Where and I mean, yesterday, perfect example, right? My guy Bundy goes out and pitches pretty damn well. Oh. Good for him. And who comes in? Pagan. And bang. Like, that. that's what... <laughs> no, but I'm serious. That's what gets me. Dylan Bundy, okay, I don't like him, but he pitched well. He gave you a chance to win on the road in the third game of, you know, where you got your ass kicked on Friday, came back and won, nice win on Saturday. Now you've got a chance again. It's a tight game. Bundy's pitched well, and you bring in Pagan. You talk about a white flag. Pagan, to me, feels like a white flag right now. Yeah, and there's not that many guys... You know, in fairness to Rocco at this point, nope. it's not like there's four or five other guys that make you're gonna whether you bring Pagan in then or an inning later, like you're gonna have to bring Pagan into the game. I'm not blaming point, you know? Rocco for this. I'm blaming the the construction that made him think this is the guy. That's my problem with it. And that was technically a blown save for Pagan based on major leagues. I'm just looking at ESPN, it's the sixth blown save of the of the season so far.
Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. So the twins are the twins are now six games under five hundred since May twenty fourth. The only way they can jolt this back is to make some trades. Yeah. You guys have any other twins? I got one more. Okay. I got one more. Off of the uh, the massacre against the Padres on Friday, I like pissed off Rocco. Yes. Rocco was as hot as I think I've ever seen him after that loss. Despite the attempt of some softballs, he was not having it. And, and he wasn't going to say too much, but he said enough. And you could tell from the way that he responded to questions. Um, and here's my contention. I don't even know that Rocco is that mad at his team. I think Rocco, rightfully so, is mad at the people upstairs. And I think he has every right to be. And this is probably as close as he's come to pulling somebody he trusts aside and saying, here's the story. Because, you know what? He should. If, if, he if, should there's, if there's legitimate conflict here, he should. And he's getting crapped on. Like fans, people on our side of the business, right? We are, you know, typical Rocco brings in P- uh, Pagan. Phil, you're right. You think Rocco really wants to bring Pagan in? Oh, yeah, bring... Do you think that Rocco really, really was itching to play Miguel Sano, who struck out four of the six times? Of course what happened not. There? Can we Can we spend a second on the Sano thing here, too? So, what's the... Because it kind of came around just late in the week, over the weekend. Yeah. Is it a re-aggravation? Is yes. it... So, he tweaked it in St. Paul, in a in game Indianapolis, in St. Paul. No, yeah, they, they were playing in Indianapolis before he got... Recalled, he said he slid into second base and felt something, and they still tried to go through to ha- have him come b- back up. My guess is, it's so he's so bad they can't play him. Yeah, do we? That's my question. It's hard to that's answer because, like, they're not going to give you a straight answer. But how much of this is actual injury versus they looked at mm-hmm. him for a couple games again and he's just not? Well, and my guess is, Rocco said he's not competitive. Like why am I? Why are you making me play him? Yeah, and then and then look who was in the starting lineup the next day. Basically, Celestino was back with the team. Yeah. So again, I don't I don't have any inside information on this, but if I'm Rocco, so Rocco batted him ninth and then pulled him after two at bats in his first game back. Correct in Milwaukee. He's not 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 exactly. That doesn't exactly scream. We were really looking to give this guy a chance in the lineup, right? It was, right, we'll hide him ninth. We'll pull him if he looks bad after a couple of bats. The first chance we get when a reliever comes in. Yes. I think Rocco loves Celestino because he's your best defensive center fielder, not named Byron Buxton. You're going to need him to play two or three days a week. So if if I'm the manager in that spot and the front office tells me, hey, we got to make room for Miguel here. So Celestino's got to go. I'd say, well, wait a second. I can't play Buxton in center field every day. Who's my center fielder? Nick Gordon's not a great outfielder. Uh, Celestino's my guy. Yeah, and he's and he's he's been slumping lately, but like he's been pretty good with the bat too. So again, I'm, this is just sort of educated speculation, reading the tea leaves. Uh, the manager probably not too thrilled with some of these things that are happening here and the options he has uh, when he turns to the bullpen. And why did Kyle Garlic stay? I know the splits, the splits, but the split. I mean, first of all, he bleep and dropped a ball on he has, Sunday. He has like a 900 OPS. He's the splits are real with Kyle Garlic. Now you're I would just rather lashing have, out it. Don't I would lash out at Kyle Garlic because I would you're rather, mad at Miguel. Did you see the drop ball on Sunday? Listen, the, the wind was blowing. Okay, it's it's very oh, difficult. God. Have you ever tried to catch a ball with the with the light shining in your eyes there too? Yeah, San I want Diego's the def- a very sunny city. I want the defense. That's what I want. I want a competent. I do not want Divin Jake. I don't want Kyle Garlic. I, you know, Nick Gordon, God bless him. He tries hard and plays a lot of different spots. But again, he dropped a ball too. Just came in and dropped it. You know, Come San Diego on. gets more sunshine on an annual basis yeah. than every city San Diego except for, for basically is Phoenix. Okay. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yeah, not, you try to catch a me. pop up. It's very not for me, but yeah, I'm not paid well to do San so. San Diego's not for you. You wouldn't live in San Diego. No, no, no. It's like I wouldn't. The- most perfect know, city in America. I know I wouldn't live there. St. Louis. Not enough Park, hustle and bustle. Not San enough Diego. hustle and bustle for me. New oh York, San Francisco. I love me some St. Louis Park Cub foods, but come on, man. San Diego. That might be your hottest take, Jed. Oh, I'm serious. Yeah, no. I've I've been there, man. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's great to visit. I'm not interested in living there. Plus, they they lost the Chargers. Oh, oh that's so now right. I'm down to the Padres. For, so now I'm down to the Padres. The so now I'm down to the Padres. What the hell am I going to do? <laughs> if it's not time for Padres baseball, yeah. what do I got? 
you know, Dex, I'm Minor League hockey? I, I forgot no that they lost the Chargers. It makes it tough. San Diego. These Chargers fans, too. Super I know traffic's Chargers. bad in Southern California, but for God's sakes, your team moved two hours north. You can still be a fan of them, okay? It's pretty easy. It's there. okay. But it's L.A. It's fine. It's the same state. It's I'm two out. hours away. Wow. Anyhow. All right. That's uh, Mackie and Judd here today on this Monday. A little statements edition. We will monitor the Twins' activity or lack thereof at the trade deadline here tomorrow. You guys will do a little bonus scoop session with Doogie. And don't forget, you have, what, a day and a half left. Scorenorth.com slash shop. Scorenorth.com slash shop. Our little pop-up shop for Purple Daily Hats, Before I Die t-shirts, Scorenorth t-shirts, koozies. Uh, get those orders in by midnight on August 2nd, and we'll, uh, we'll ship them to you for free. See you guys.